Spalding is no longer going to be the official ball of the NBA. Is it Wilson now? This year it's going to be Wilson. Ah, I'll get this out of here. <laughs> What's up, GQ? I'm Simu Liu, and these are my essentials. Hey, when we rap, it's all fair game. All right, first, we gotta talk about Asian snacks. So many Asian kids, like myself, when we brought these snacks to school, we used to get made fun of, right? Because the kids wouldn't know what they were. So now, we're here to demystify them. Let's start with Pockies. These are sweet, they're delicious, they're crunchy. Mmm, yeah. Just the way I remembered them. Representation matters. And it's about more than just, you know, actors on a screen. It's about snacks. It's about food, it's about culture in every possible way. Japanese rice crackers, they're like wonderfully sweet, savory kind of rice cakes, shredded squid. Absolutely delicious. Don't give me that look. I know you're giving me that look right now from across the screen. Mm. White rabbit candy, otherwise known as da by tool. Delicious, iconic lemon tea drink from Vita, lunchbox staple. And my personal favorite, shrimp crackers. Shrimp crackers is actually exactly what I was eating when I got the call that I was gonna play Shang-Chi. I had just woken up from a nap. It was about 6.30 in the evening. I was eating some shrimp crackers at my desk. And then I get a call from an unknown number in Burbank, California, and you know, my heart immediately skips a beat because I know that Disney head office is in Burbank. I had a feeling that this was gonna be the call and so I, I, I picked up the phone. Kevin Feige's voice on the other end telling me that I was gonna be Shang-Chi and uh, basically realized that my life would be changed forever. So this isn't your average pair of scuffed up worn in Jordans, all right? These are movie worn Jordan accesses. You know, I'm pretty sure there is a Marvel PA out there still trying to track these down, but guess what? On my last day of shooting, I did manage to swipe them. You could tell with the, you know, these have been artistically scuffed. This is not even real dirt, but I believe that these were the shoes that were worn for the iconic bus scene. I split kicked two bad guys with these shoes. So pretty sweet mems. They're definitely gonna go in a case, displayed somewhere until somebody I live with tells me that I can't keep these around anymore. Very, <clears throat> the shrimp crackers. <clears throat> so very important to travel with a solid pair of sunglasses. These are a pair of Hugo Bosses. It's always a struggle for me. I have a, a very wide face, and so most sunglasses I try on are just a bit too skinny. These, I feel like, frame my face kind of nice. My favorite part is that they actually snap off, and all of a sudden, you've got a very distinguished scholarly look but then deal with it. It seems like the more money I spend on sunglasses, the faster I lose them. There's this like one pair of $12 sunglasses I bought at the Santa Monica Pier like eight years ago and that one seems to be the only one that never gets lost. It happens more often than I'd like to admit. I'm, I'm hoping these ones make it more than like the six to eight month mark. This is bubble tea, AKA boba, AKA Jinju Nai Cha. It is the iconic drink of Asian America, just like Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings will be the iconic movie of Asian America. These are all 50% sweet. Still doesn't change the fact that they're uh, a lot. You've got things that are a little bit more milky. So this is a jasmine milk tea right here. You have things that are a little bit more fruity. This is a strawberry green tea with a uh, lychee jelly. And you got uh, some you know, new flavors as well. This is a milk foam winter melon drink. I like a good grip with the straw, you know, I don't like them to be too small, otherwise you you know, you can suck up a bunch at once. I really like the one boba at a time kind of situation. You just gotta make sure that you cover the top and then you go in and you go in nice and firm. Just one, two, three, pop, break the seal, stir it around a little bit and go in and enjoy. Mmm, that is good boba. I never was a watch collector growing up. My dad was never into watches. I mean, we literally grew up so poor and came from like absolutely nothing. So I never really knew too much about watches. So I really just went on the look and the feel of it. One of my favorite watches to wear are IWCs. This is a Portugueser, 14 karat gold. This is a Top Gun Edition Pilots watch, the black band. This is a 3777 Pilots watch. Such an iconic look with the metal strap. I have a couple of pieces in mind that I'd love to get my hands on, but I'm also trying not to get ahead of myself too much. I really just want to see how this movie does and hopefully, you know, get to do more. And, and when I get room to breathe, I'll kind of take a look at the collection and see what pieces it needs. This is a basketball. Obviously. I've always been a massive basketball fan. Fancy myself a player. Shout out to all of my friends back home 
who I hoop with. So, I mean, I, I played basketball all throughout high school, was never really any good, averaged maybe a solid six or seven points a game, had big NBA dreams, and uh, unfortunately, at the age of 32, I feel like they're, they're dashed. Uh, w one of the main things, probably the critical factor, is I, I never ended up growing past like 5'11 and a half, but I, I, I was like one of the bigger kids when I was 15 or 16, so I played small forward, so I was this like tiny small forward. But that being said, the NBA All-Star celebrity game still very much in the cards. I was actually flatmates with Ronnie Chang. I mean, he lived in the same hotel as me. He was like right underneath and we would play basketball. We play one-on-one -on -one like hours and hours a day, every day. And look, I'm just gonna be real, all right? I would spot him like five points to a game to seven and I would still beat him like 90% of the time. Yeah, Ronnie Chang. Sorry, buddy. Sorry to put you on blast like that, but uh, come on. Love Xbox. This is an Xbox Series X Black Elite controller. Perfect for any sort of Call of Duty, Halo. I mean, I love all of that. I love playing 2K, so this is an absolute travel must for me. It looks like the Lamborghini of video game controllers. Like, the first Halo came out right when I was like, around 14 years old and we literally played it all the time. Like me and my three friends would play, I still remember so clearly, hang em high, pistols only. Three headshots in a row with a pistol could kill you. And that's, we, we got so good at it, we just kept, we just kept doing it. Theragun is really important for me, whether I'm playing sports or just sitting for really long periods of time. My wonderful publicist got me these two for the start of our press tour. I've been pretty hooked ever since. It's just really important to keep the muscles loose. It's really nice when you don't have time to go to the spa, even though I feel like everybody should make time to go to the spa. You just gotta treat yourself, you know? I'm usually either, you know, in the midst of writing something or editing something or reading a, a bunch of scripts. And the one thing that I have with me right now that I've been editing for the better part of the last year is my manuscript. So I wrote a book called we were dreamers, and we're just going through some final edits on it right now. So the pages have markings all over them and all of that, but I carry it with me wherever I go. I read it kind of over and over and over again, and I just kind of jot down any new thoughts that I have. So we were dreamers is, is gonna be this beautiful story, and it, and it tells the journey of my family from China all the way to Canada, and now to Hollywood, graduating with a degree in finance and accounting, losing my job, ultimately making the decision to get started in acting and then finally taking us all the way through to that fateful call. I'm really excited to share it with the world so it comes out May of 2022. I wonder who would play me. I wish I knew any actors that looked like me. It, uh, it's just none come to mind. Well, maybe like a Brad Pitt or something. You gotta travel with a comfy hoodie and this is my comfy hoodie. It was gifted to me by my stylist, Jean Yang, who is wonderful. She's an amazing, badass woman. She got me my very first Fear of God hoodie, number seven. Shout out to Jean, I love you. You're the best. Fleeced interior, all right? Soft to the touch. The hoodie is also an homage to Colin Kaepernick. That's the you know the number seven and the colors. What he stands for is just really just you know speaking out for racial equality. I think it's something that you know I also consider myself a big advocate of. He advocates I think for his community. I advocate for mine, and we also you know together advocate for allyship and solidarity between groups as well. So shout out to you, Colin. All right, thank you everybody so much for hanging out with me and checking out my essentials. I will see you guys next time. Mm.